Hello again, this is UML Operator. Okay, in this session, we're gonna set up a Sparks SQL database and prepare to start modeling in that instance. At the same page where you downloaded the Sparks software, they provide you set up a database repository. We're gonna select that and it's gonna take us to the database repository schemas for the targeted data technology you wanna use. And we're going to choose Microsoft SQL. Please note the important limitations they provide you. The schema update uh, is not backwards compatible. We need to make sure we're using 1558, all right? Very important. So I'm on build 16. Well, I'm just gonna say major release 16. This is the same schema that was back in 15, I believe. It even states using this schema 14 or later. So pay attention to the notes here. I'm assuming you're a database administrator and that you're allowed to set up data tables and databases on your SQL server. So we're gonna select download because we're creating a new, we're not doing an update, we're creating a new SQL instance. So we're gonna download this SQL. And then after we've completed that, we need to ensure that we've got the enterprise architect initial data scripts. We're gonna to go to Microsoft SQL Server and we're going to download the EA base. So this sets up those empty tables to allow you to start modeling in Sparks. Here's the two files that we downloaded. If you have your SQL Studio open, you can simply double click this one. We're gonna open up both of them. And this is what sets up the tables for the targeted SQL instance that we wanna run. Let's go ahead and execute this schema. And it's running right now and we'll get a success message and we're done. If we open up the tables, we can see we now have all of the Sparks tables loaded into SQL Trainer. However, we must load the EA base files, load these tables in order to use Spark. So the next thing we're going to do is, let's just go ahead and open up the file, go to EA base for 1558. We're gonna go ahead and open that. And here we go. So you can see this sets up all of the necessary data within that in those tables. So let's go ahead and execute this. And that should load. There we go. Everything was successfully done. Let's just pick one of the tables. I'm going to pick Cardinality. Let's just run a SQL on it. And you can see Cardinality has been set up within these tables. So that should tell you that all of the tables are properly set up for Sparks Enterprise Architect. All right, we've loaded Sparks. We don't have any projects loaded. We're gonna go over to Server Connection and Team Repository. I'm gonna go ahead and select this. And we're gonna give this a name. So what we're gonna do is call this Sparks Trainer. We're using Microsoft SQL, ODBC Connection. We have a server name in here and a port provided by the database administrator. We want to use the necessary database name. And in this particular case, it is Sparks Trainer. We have a user that's been provided by the DBA and a password. We want to test the connection. It says the connection is successful. Let's go ahead and just select OK. As soon as we do that, we're connecting to the SQL Server. Whatever name we gave it comes up as the name in recent, and it is a blank model ready to go. Now, when I create a SQL instance of any type, the very first thing that I do is right-click on the name, and I edit the name. All I do is I append to it SQL, telling me that this is a SQL connection, all right? You can't do that on other files. See, I don't get the option to edit. You can only do that on SQL instances. It gives you the ability to name this anything you want. But I would try to disseminate between my QEA extension or my local files and my SQL connections, my cloud connections, okay? So in my cloud connections, though I'm connecting to a cloud SQL instance, I might put cloud in parenthetically uh, after the name of the 
whatever I'm calling the particular instance, right? The next thing I do is I go over to model. I'm going to add a package. This is, this is the root folder. I'm going to add a package under it called main because I want to give myself a navigation point. And so as soon as I do that, I get the dialog box for new diagram. I'm just going to go with a class diagram type. And now I have a blank diagram type within the SQL instance that I can start using. Now this next part is going to be driven by your database administrator and your security, your desktop administrator. And that's giving you access to this SQL connection, right? So when you go to launch the SQL connection, if you did not have the security that we set up for this, you'd be challenged for credentials before you could even launch the instance. But what we want to do on this is we want to enable security, all right? So the first thing you do is you go over, your admin is going to go over, is going to enable security on this instance. So they're going to go to the admin section. They're going to select uh, enable security. They're going to have to use the authorization key provided by Sparks, and that will enable security on the instance. Now, where you get that role-based security key is, you know, not top secret. You go back to where you downloaded your software license and you'll see user role-based security. If I was to expand this, I will get a security key that I can copy then come back over and paste it into that dialog window that I showed you a moment ago. Once you have the key, you copy the key in, you have an option to automatically apply Exclusive added locks to diagrams. I usually check this. I want that to happen every time. You don't have to check it. You can always come back, turn that on and off if you're the model administrator. All right. Then you, you're told here that security has been enabled and you can log in now using admin as the username and literally password as I talk about in the security enabled video. So, that's all you need. I usually tell people to log this down because <laughs> believe it or not, they might get interrupted. They'll come back and they go, oh, was that username admin? Was it administrator? Was it admin? Was it a capital A? You know, what was the password again? Was it capital P? You know, oh, shoot, but just password, right? You know, And then they contact me and I'm going, hey, <laughs> contact Sparks or uh, there's ways to hack around it get support from Sparks, right? So make sure you write that down. So now you've got administrator logged on. And if you were to uh, go back to the start screen, let's lose focus for a moment. Let's come back to it. And uh, let me come back to it again. There we go. See, we're challenged for it. And it's admin, password. They're going to log into the instance. All right, we are in, there we go. We're logged into the SQL instance. We have a blank diagram. So what your security administrator is gonna do is come in and start adding users, all right? So they're, they're gonna change the password for admin login, right? They're gonna add some ad, more administrators. They're gonna give them, they're gonna apply them to the administrator group. They're going to create new groups with certain permissions and or restrictions. I'll talk about configuring all this in a later session. All right. So there you go. Now you're now you're connected to a SQL. You know, I might go back to the main page, go to start, go to model view and set as default. So when everybody loads it, doesn't go there, of course, they land on the main page. So I come out and I relaunch this. And I put in whatever my username and password is, right? The first page I'm going to log in is the landing page, right? Just like that, that I've shown you in other videos as well. So I hope this video session has helped you. This is how you connect to SQL. We're going to be talking more about this in future sessions. But now you have access to a lot of the power of collaboration. Because now you can discuss, open up discussions, journals, that are specific to the user and now personal makes more sense. So you can have your own diagrams, manage your own diagrams, your own Kanbans. So now with 
team repository set up. There's a lot more you can do in Sparks. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, happy modeling. I'll talk to you all later.